Everyone needs a shoulder to cry on. Everyone needs a helping hand. Everyone needs someone to rely on. Yes, everyone needs a friend. So let's no, come together You're lying. Celebrate oh, each oh. other Shut Stand up. united oh. as oh one my God. We lift our hands up and pray Lay all our love before Him With all of our faith He is the change within us There is a light Let Him lead the way Lift our hands up and everyone welcome back to my channel I don't think that there is any correct way that I can start this video and I'm sure it's not the video you guys were expecting but I just want to sit down and be honest with you guys and just share what has been going on behind scenes and in my life and in Jonathan's life because it's been a whirlwind I'm sure there's going to be a lot of emotions in this video, so I apologize ahead of time. I'll try to keep the tears at bay, but I know that there is definitely going to be some shit. I'm already crying. But as you guys were able to see in the beginning clips of this video, and for those of you who have been with me since last year, you guys would know that last year around this time, Jonathan and I were expecting our first baby. We were expecting a boy and we were so excited. We were absolutely ecstatic. Our whole family was so happy for us and just awaiting this little boy with so much love. It was my first pregnancy. I didn't know much about pregnancy, but it was very blissful to be pregnant for the first time and just truly enjoying that it's excitement that comes along with it and yeah it was a really beautiful journey that unfortunately had a very sad ending in august of 2022 i thought i was walking into just my 17 week ob appointment and it was the worst day of my life Unfortunately, when the doctor went to look for a heartbeat on the Doppler, the doctor could not find one. Actually, she was a midwife, um, but she could not find one. And through ultrasound, we confirmed that our baby no longer had a heartbeat and he had passed away at about 14 weeks. So I went three weeks carrying my baby without knowing that he was no longer with us. And in that moment, or back then, it wasn't that I was naive to miscarriages because I knew that they were so common. But I knew and I had heard of miscarriages in the first trimester. When we got past the first trimester, you just kind of feel like you're in the clear, like you're all good, you know, like everything's perfect and you're going to bring home a baby. I had no idea about missed miscarriages, which is what I had, which is when your baby passes away and your body doesn't recognize it, your body doesn't pass it naturally, you have absolutely no symptoms. But that's what happened. <sighs> I 
It was so hard. I don't think anything had broke me as much as losing my son did. And we were just so filled with questions. We wanted to know what was the cause. But that leads me to an overarching theme that you guys will find in this video. And that is our medical system. And just our medical process, I guess. Because we did not qualify for any further testing. We were told that miscarriages were normal, that things just happened, that it was a fluke, that normally miscarriages happen due to chromosomal abnormalities in the babies, and that it's just something that happens, but that it did not reduce the um, chances of us having a healthy pregnancy following our miscarriage, and that was basically it. Um, any further testing, we were told that there was none needed until after you have three miscarriages. But again, we were assured that our next pregnancy would be healthy and so on and so forth. The only option we were offered was to get our baby genetically tested just to rule out that it was any chromosomal abnormalities that we could look out for in our following pregnancy. So when we received our results back, our baby was chromosomally normal. So that was basically the only answer we got, which was basically absolutely no answer. Okay, so at this point, after losing our son, there was obviously a lot of heartbreak and there was a lot of grieving that came with it but there was also a lot of hope because we were being told that again miscarriages happen and this was a fluke and more than likely our next pregnancy would be healthy and go to term especially because we were able to see that our son did not have any chromosomal abnormalities. So we were given the okay to go ahead and start trying whenever we wanted. However, me being me, I did not feel secure in just trying right away without having some sort of plan in place. And I joined a lot of like pregnancy loss groups on Facebook and after a lot of women shared with me their stories, I came to the conclusion that for a lot of them, taking a progesterone supplement and a, be a baby aspirin helped them carry their next baby to term. So I made sure that I found an OB who was willing to treat my next pregnancy with both of those things. Believe it or not, not every OB out there believes in baby aspirin or even believes in giving you progesterone. Um, there's a lot of research for whether it helps or it doesn't, but anyways, I was just looking for that one little bit of something extra that gave me a little bit more peace of mind. So I did find another OB. I met with her. We discussed just our plan going forward if I did end up getting pregnant again and she agreed to prescribe progesterone and have me drink one baby aspirin a day. So to our surprise we got pregnant pretty quickly afterwards. We found out in October that I was expecting again and while it was so exciting because every baby is a blessing it was also really scary. It was really scary to think that it would have the same outcome. It was it was just it was hard but it was still full of hope because again it was like we thought it can't happen again. Like it can't possibly happen again. It just can't. And we went into this pregnancy with a lot of fear but a lot of hope as well. 
however this time we kept it a secret from our entire family our first pregnancy we were so ecstatic to tell everyone we told everyone as soon as we found out and by everyone i mean our family but for this second pregnancy we kept it a secret except for my younger sister we did end up telling her because i had to stop going to the gym with her so she kind of put two 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 and two together but we kept it a secret up until christmas so in our family we celebrate on the 24th and on the 22nd we went in to get a private ultrasound just to make sure that everything was okay and that we felt comfortable sharing the news with our family on christmas eve and everything was fine everything was fine that ultrasound so we ended up telling my family that i was pregnant on Christmas and we were so excited the second time we were expecting a little girl and like I said we were just as excited but very fearful but anyways um, Christmas Day I actually turned 13 weeks so I was one day shy from 13 weeks when we told our whole family and we actually had a trip to Mexico to visit Jonathan's family and we went and we did that because we thought we were good. We had the all clear from our OB. Everything seemed to be going good up until that point. However, when we came back, we had an OB appointment for our 15 week appointment scheduled on January 5th and this was actually really weird because we went in for our ob appointment and when the doctor went to put the doppler on my belly it took her a minute to find a heartbeat but she did find a heartbeat and she said that baby was okay everything was okay you are good to go I did insist if I could get an ultrasound at first before the Doppler just because I'm terrified of Dopplers and she said that no ultrasound that she could only do the Doppler that day. So I'm saying when she did it, found a heartbeat, said baby was okay. Um, she then brought up doing the ultrasound anyway. She was like, maybe we should just do it so it gives you more peace of mind. And I was happy. I was like, heck yes, bring in that ultrasound machine. I want to see my baby. Um, she brought in like the bedside ultrasound and the ultrasound machine did not want to turn on like it was not working But since she had heard it on the Doppler she sent us on our way and had to schedule our 20 week ultrasound and so on Walking out of that appointment Jonathan and I just we didn't feel good not having been able to see baby so Jonathan said to try to schedule a private ultrasound and hopefully if we could get in same day. So to our luck we were able to get an appointment for that same day at 2 p.m. And again I don't know if it was just our gut feeling or what but when we went into that private ultrasound she couldn't find a heart. And I just remember looking at Jonathan just saying, not again. I was so confused because the OB had found a heartbeat that morning, yet the ultrasound tech was saying there was no heartbeat. And she was able to tell us that our baby had passed away at 13 weeks. So two weeks prior. And it was happening again. It was living this nightmare all over again. So long story short, the no heartbeat was confirmed 
by our OB practice and we lost her. If I thought losing our son had broke me, when we lost our daughter, oh, you guys, that broke me. That absolutely destroyed me. That sent me down a spiral I don't ever want to be in again. And to top it off, when we asked our OB why, like, why did this happen again? I kid you not that she said straight to our faces, it's just really shitty bad luck. That's all we got from her. I had never felt my faith so shaken like I did after losing our second baby. I felt so forsaken by God. I felt like it was so unfair. I felt angry. I felt upset. I felt despair I, I, I don't I don't even know how to put it into words you guys but I have never felt the way I felt following our second loss and then to look towards your doctors your experts and them tell you that it's just really shitty bad luck and instead of tell you let me help you find answers let's figure out why this is happening i can't even begin to explain to you guys the anger and the fury that ran through my heart and through my veins and through my whole body But that was our reality. That, that, that is what was happening. <sighs> Thank God that she, however, put in a referral for us to see a maternal fetal medicine doctor. So a high risk OB. And that was the last that I have heard of her. I don't ever want to see her again. <laughs> but I will get... There's a lot of pieces to this story. I hit a all-time low, you guys. Um, I am so grateful, so, so grateful for Jonathan. Because while I know that this affected him just as hard, if it had not been for him, you guys, I do not know what would have been of me. That's just the honest truth. In February, this is aside from everything going on, but in February, we were a part of a marriage retreat um, for our church. And it was the most beautiful thing we have ever lived. But anyways, I can't talk much about it. But one of the activities that we did was they had us write a love letter to each other and uh, this was like in the midst of everything I'm about to tell you guys but in his letter he wrote one specific line that really turned everything for me and he said you give me the strength to do what I fear the most and you guys 100% I feel the same for him that he, in that sentence that he wrote but also isn't that what God does for us does it does he not give
give us the strength to do what we fear the most. I'm just going to leave it at that because, again, my faith was at play in this whole journey and I have a testimony that one day I hope I can share. But let's get back to the journey that is this whole trying to conceive and losing our baby journey journeys. So when um while waiting for my appointment with the maternal fetal medicine doctor I joined yet another pregnancy loss group where I found out a lot more information regarding loss in your second trimester and um, to my surprise apparently blood clotting can be a huge factor in pregnancy loss again I am not a medical professional you guys but I am just sharing my journey and my story with you guys because I don't think that a lot of women who go through this know about it and I have vowed to just be as honest as I can because maybe this can help someone else but anyways I came to find out that blood clotting has a big factor in pregnancy loss, specifically in the second trimester or past 10 weeks. And there is a whole array of blood clotting disorders that can come at play and affect pregnancy. So I did all the research I could. I armed myself with all the knowledge I could. And when it came down to my appointment with my MFM, I went in and I shared absolutely everything I had to share with him. All of my concerns, all of my research, all of my knowledge. And I basically pushed for him to test my blood clotting. Like just all the blood clotting disorders that he could test for. I got a little bit of pushback um, and we agreed to go ahead and wait for the genetic testing on the baby because for some reason those results got lost and we hadn't received them. It had been a month since, um, since I had my DNC but anyways in the meantime I didn't just want to sit down and wait for those results to come in so we agreed that we would go ahead and test. Um, my homocysteine level which if that came back elevated that could be an indicator that I had a mutation called MTHFR so I did that blood testing and that actually came back normal so once again I was going to be dismissed because he did not believe it would be a blood clotting disorder because I have no history of blood clots I'm young I'm healthy healthy um, so I got a bit of pushback. However, I did some research and I found a lab that sends you a testing kit to your house to get tested for MTHFR. They also have a test for factor five and another blood clotting disorder. I can't remember the name, but I will have everything linked down below in the description box in case you guys want to do the same thing. And, um... I paid for it, I got it sent to me, I took the test, and when I received the results, I came back positive for MTHFR, for um, one of the mutations. I believe mine specifically was um, hetero for C677T. So with that result, I was able to go into my next MFM appointment and push for the blood clotting panel testing. So by that time, the genetic results for our baby girl had come in and she was genetically normal as well. So when I showed them that I did come back positive for MTHFR and I pushed for my blood clotting panel to be tested, um, he was on board. Thankfully, he was on board. However, I don't know why but our geneticist kind of gave us pushback saying that we had to get it approved by insurance before we went in because she didn't want us to end up with a huge bill and so on so forth which in this scenario 
our insurance would have been billed first anyways by law they have to and then anything that they don't cover gets billed to us so i just did not see the point in waiting for our insurance to approve it when regardless if they didn't cover it we would have to end up paying for it and it was something jonathan and i were both willing to pay for so our doctor while our geneticist kept insisting she didn't want us to end up with a huge bill our doctor actually suggested that i call the lab and just make sure that the total would be something jonathan and i were comfortable paying for if we did end up having to pay out of pocket for all of it so like worst case scenario you guys believe it or not the total came to about 700 dollars um i was informed by the lab customer service rep that my insurance would more than likely cover all of it and if they didn't they would also apply a discount like an out-of-pocket discount so really thankfully and we are very blessed the cost was not an issue so we went back i went back to my geneticist i told her look i just want to move forward with the testing like it doesn't matter if the insurance hasn't approved it blah 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 right um i didn't hear back for a couple days but when i did hear back apparently the insurance approved it so i was given the okay to go get this blood panel done you guys it was like 30 test tubes for like 30 different testing or like 20 i don't even remember but it was a lot of a lot of blood test um and it was worth it because when they came back i came back positive for another blood clotting mutation or disorder or mutation that affects blood clotting i guess is put better and it is called pi 4g 5g to my understanding, you want to have Pi 5G 5G. However, one of my parents passed down the 4G to me. The 4G is the one you don't want to have because it affects blood clotting. It actually makes your blood clot way quicker, especially in a hypercoagulable state, which pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but anyways, again, I'm not a medical professional. Please do your own research, but I will try to give you as many resources as I can. So at this point, we know I have the MTHFR mutation, Pi 4G 5G, and we also know that my factor 8 activity, which factor 8 is also a blood clotting factor, and a normal factor 8 activity is between... I believe it was 40 to 160. I will put it right here on the screen. And mine came back at over 200. So I have really, really sticky blood, very, very likely to clot. And when you mix in pregnancy, even more so. So at this point, we are kind of deducing that this is the reason for my losses and at least we have something to pinpoint so i had another appointment with my mfm to go over these results there's a lot of research again where there is correlations between having MTHFR and having recurrent pregnancy loss where there is correlation with Pi 4G, 5G and recurrent pregnancy loss. But there's just that much research saying that there is no relationship. However, at this point, because I have had two losses and everything else seems normal, my cervix was good, everything else was good. We, we, meaning me i really did believe so but my maternal fetal medicine doctor also believes that the blood clotting really did come into play and could very likely be the reason for my losses so in this appointment we made a plan for my future pregnancy in which i would have to be on a blood thinning injection once every single day 
So one injection every single day for the entirety of my pregnancy. And this is so basically my blood is thin enough to supply the baby. And yes, that was the plan. So a blood thinning injection and a baby aspirin and a progesterone. So with a protocol in place, we were given the green light to try it again. And this was back in march end of march so it took about two months to go through all this testing and this whole process and yeah we were given the green light to try again and we felt a lot more hopeful with a plan in place a protocol in place i had joined a group on facebook where a lot of ladies have shared their success with similar protocols after being diagnosed with similar um, blood clotting disorders and so on so now to the part you guys probably all have been waiting for and really pointed out in a few videos back and that is that i am pregnant i am pregnant again i am so excited i am so scared at the same time I was not keeping it from you guys to be mean or to be secretive or anything like that. I was keeping it from you guys for obvious reasons. It's been a very scary pregnancy um, and we were really just hoping to make it past our scary zone which is first trimester going into the second trimester and when we lost our other two babies so 13 weeks and 14 weeks and I am so so happy to say that I am 15 weeks and a couple days today and at our 15 week appointment we were there was a lot a lot that was pending on this appointment and everything was good <laughs> Praise God, everything was good with our baby. Um, this is what a high pregnancy, a high risk pregnancy looks like. We have had so many appointments. We have been followed so, so closely. Um, and our baby was okay. Um, Obviously, we know that we're not out of the woods. Things can happen at any point in pregnancy. But being outside of that scary zone really, really means a lot. Like I said, we have been monitored very closely. I have very frequent appointments and specifically monitored, monitoring, monitoring the baby's heart and the blood flow from the placenta to the baby and everything looks absolutely beautiful praise god everything looked good and we felt comfortable enough to finally share this journey with you guys and like i said every life deserves to be celebrated i felt weird telling you guys I was pregnant again without acknowledging our second baby. Um, and I just wanted this to be a resource for anyone going through something similar. Um, so they could hopefully have a good outcome. I'm hoping that we have a good outcome. But when I tell you guys having my high risk OB come into the room like a tomato just red with a beaming smile high-fiving me and just saying that he's confident that we will get to bring a baby home is truly on another level of happiness i cannot explain to you guys how happy we are feeling how optimistic and how hopeful we are please continue to pray for us please continue to pray for this baby this pregnancy i am doing absolutely everything that I can to hold this baby inside of me and help him continue grow. And um, yeah, so, so anyways, this is the little magic medicine. Um, I get injected once a day by Jonathan with this in my tummy. 
I'm drinking baby aspirin, I'm taking progesterone, and my prenatals, of course, and so far, so good. But once again, you guys, please continue praying for us. Please continue praying for our baby and this pregnancy. And we are really hopeful that everything will be okay. And yes, if you have any questions or going through something similar, um, please reach out to me. I have a lot of resources. Like I said, I can send you the links to the groups I've joined and just help with however I can. But yeah that is it i guess it's not the typical pregnancy announcement you see on youtube from influencers but this is my story this is our journey and yeah i might do an another video answering any questions you guys might have so follow me on instagram i probably will do like a question box over there but if you made it this far, you guys know the news and the news is I am pregnant and I'm really, really excited. We're really, really happy and yeah, we're just going to continue praying and doing what we are doing and hopefully we get to bring a little baby home this time. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it's so different from all my content, but... I'm excited that it's no longer a secret and that I can wear whatever I want in all of my videos <laughs> and not have to hide the ultrasound pictures behind me in every single frame. So I will see you guys in my next one and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.